gosh, my hand, guys. It's cramping so bad. I was just finishing the final details on this and I literally had to peel each of my fingers off of the piping bag because it was like cramping so hard. Yeah, all the bakers out there, I feel for you. So I have become slightly obsessed with houseplants and gardening in the last year or two. And since 2020 has had me stuck inside in the city, not being able to be around nature for, you know, unforeseen circumstances, I decided to kind of just make my holiday wishes come true and build myself my own greenhouse that I can pop down and I can pretend to be inside. So if you guys want to see my struggles and my successes, then let's skip to day one. So in my lovely secret notebook where I hold all of my deepest, darkest secrets, we have my gingerbread house. Ignore this one because that was way too ambitious and I toned it down a little bit. It's gonna be this cute little English um, greenhouse garden thing that I dream of having. First, I need my gingerbread, so. So I have a batch of my favorite gingerbread recipe right here. Um, I'll put a little link to my video tutorial on how to make it but I guess we should start rolling out our gingerbread. Once you've rolled out your dough, lay down the stencil and cut around the border. I would highly recommend using a bench scraper for this. It's a game changer. Stick the piece in the freezer for about 10 minutes. This step is absolutely crucial if you want sharp, clean cuts. Trace the design onto the dough and cut it out. I used a putty scraper from my toolbox for this, Mine had paint on it, but I'm not planning to eat the gingerbread, so honestly it didn't bother me. Especially since it's so much easier than a knife and the cuts are super sharp and straight. Go ahead and bake it in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit until the edges darken slightly. My pieces were thin, so they only took about five to eight minutes. So my very delicate cookie pieces are looking like this. So I found a super exciting hack for that glass look without having to deal with sugar or anything like that. So for those of you in Europe, you'll probably recognize these. These are gelatin sheets, you use these pretty often. But for us in the US, we use more of gelatin powders, so this looks a little unfamiliar. But I just found mine on Amazon. It came in a package like this. And the little gelatin sheets look like little pieces of glass. It's so nice, and it has like a beautiful design on it. It's gonna save me so much time too. So I'm just gonna take one of my gelatin sheets right here and line it up. Just give it a little trim. I have a little bit of royal icing in this bag right here. And if you guys want the recipe for this, I made a little tutorial in my gingerbread display video. So just click right here if you want to know how to make it. Doesn't this look like real glass? so good. So at this point the sun had set at like 4 p.m. but I still needed to add some icing details to my pieces so they could dry overnight. So I'm just using some flood consistency royal icing to add a cobblestone border around the base of the house. Good morning everybody! Welcome to day two of my gingerbread baking and today it's snowing outside so what better day to put my snowman... my my gingerbread together than today because it is snowing. So I have here a piece of cardboard bigger than the size of my gingerbread house because I want to have like a little path leading up to it and some trees in the front. To assemble the base, I piped a line of stiff real icing on the cardboard and the bottom of the gingerbread. This is the glue, so don't be skimpy with it. And as you can see here, I'm pretty skilled with the piping bag. I mean, look at that save. Wow. Go ahead and stick her on and add a little more glue for good measure. Repeat this with all the other walls and add icing to the corners to connect them. <gasps> oh! Like I said, skilled. Here you can see me answering some of your questions on American Ballet Theater's Instagram. I had so much fun filming that day, so thank you so much to everyone that sent kind messages and took the time to follow me. So I learned how to bake mainly through experience and watching other YouTube tutorials and such, um, but I kind of grew into my little 
baking habit when I moved to New York and was introduced to all these new bakeries around and I kind of just wanted to do it myself. Yes, I'm gonna make plants for my greenhouse. I was actually, oops, I was actually just rolling out this sugar paste called fondant. Um, it just comes in a package like this, and it's basically just like an edible Play-Doh. All right, guys, it is day three of making my gingerbread house. <sighs> I'm honestly questioning my sanity right now. I'm simply running on coffee and Christmas spirit. It's great. It's not snowing today, but you know what? It is what it is. To make the Christmas tree, I pipe stiff green rural icing onto a waffle cone. Now there isn't much footage of this because I did have two angles filming, but Conehead Emily managed to get neither one in frame, and then this happened. <gasps> At this point, my hand was cramping, so I was not about to redo this, so I just turned the smoosh side to the back. <gasps> Is my tree falling over? Oh my god, my tree fell over. My tree, it fell over. At least it's the back side, but. All right, let me fix this. Moving on, I used fondant to form my terracotta pots and a food writer pen to draw in the soil. I decided to make mini versions of my own plants for my greenhouse, so here you can see me talking for a ridiculous amount of time about how much I love my Begonia Maculata Whiteii. I mean, how could I not, like, look at it? It has freaking polka dots. Okay, baking Emily, stay on track. What am I doing now? Oh yes. Um, I used a small amount of wire to help shape my plants, and then added the fondant leaves. I also made a variegated rubber tree and a starfish sansevieria. Okay, so we are getting closer and closer to putting the roof on, which will be one of the last steps. So I have some white fondant here. I'm just gonna make little balls to put on as ornaments. It took me so long to untangle these string lights, but once I did, I poked a hole into the bottom of the cardboard and pulled the wire through so they sat inside the greenhouse nicely. La la! I get way too excited about lights. All right, so all my plants are inside and here comes the most stressful part, the roof. I repeated the same gluing process to the roof and if the pieces keep slipping down, just go ahead and prop them up with some cans or jars um, just to hold them in place until they set. It's so beautiful. Now I'm creating the lace detail for the top of the roof. So I went ahead and measured out how big I wanted it and piped it onto a piece of parchment paper. Then I set it aside to dry overnight. Now for my favorite part, piping the final details, it's just so satisfying watching it all come together. Alright guys, day four of making my gingerbread house. I thought I was going to be able to finish it last night, but unfortunately when I went to peel off my little 
um, detail piece up here, it broke in half, so I had to wait overnight for it to dry again. Um, so I'm gonna do that this morning. That's the most stressful part, I think, of this whole thing. So wish me luck. I'm gonna start with the back piece. I just broke this piece, I just broke it. So now I'm going to go all around this part and add some drips just to clean up the look of it. Thank you guys so much for following me to the end of the video. Here is the final look. It's gonna sit here for a little while because I just love looking at this thing. It makes me so happy and it makes me dream of my garden one day. How fun would that be to just like walk outside into your garden and like, you know, harvest some of your veggies and then saute it for dinner. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Either way, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like. Don't forget to check me out on my Instagram right here and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Bisous!